Hi pals, it's Mick, and I guess you might be a little bit surprised to see me back so soon, but last week really inspired me to get back into the swing of things, so I decided to go ahead and do a, kind of a little bit of an easier thing for me, uh, maybe a little less of a heavy topic <laughs> than last week, but I decided to do a Draw This In Your Style. And for those of you who don't know what that is, basically it's a trend on Instagram where somebody will put up a piece of their own art and then ask everybody else on Instagram who sees the tag or who wants to, to draw that same image but in their own style. And so I decided to redraw this image by this Instagrammer. I feel like I'm probably going to butcher their name, but I think it might be Gaelic, I think it might be Neve, but... I'm probably wrong. So yeah, this is this is how you spell their Instagram. And they did this tag with it, so that's the tag that I used when I created this. Here is my interpretation of that piece of art. I included some metallics. I don't know if you can, there you go, see them a little bit better like that in the light. And if you would like to see the process of how I created this watercolor painting, just stick around. Oh, and please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video, and click the notification bell if you would like to see the next time that I upload. Hopefully it will be next week, but don't hold me to that, okay? <laughs> So today I'm painting with the Kuratake Gansai Tambai watercolours, which I feel like I should probably be better at pronouncing since I've been learning Japanese, but I'm not. Um, I'm also recording this voiceover in a different place than I normally would, and my heater is on, so I apologise if you can hear that, but it is too cold to turn it off or be somewhere else. Anyway, I'm starting with a light wash of colours, a couple of them, a skin colour and a kind of blush tone, and this is sort of the way that I start most of my paintings now. It's something that I picked up from I'm a Wonder, and I think that it works really well, and it's a really lovely base, and then as you'll see in this video, I do lots and lots of layers to build it up. Something that I've noticed throughout watching this video a couple of times and as I was editing it is that it goes in and out of focus a few times and I'm really sorry, that is something that I will work on in the future. It's something that you'll see that I made a little bit of an improvement on towards the end of the video. But something that has started happening with my camera that I'm not sure why it's happening is, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but basically it seems like the, the frame is kind of shaking a little bit. And I have been filming in 4K and it's only happened in that time. But it also seems to coincide with poor lighting. I really do need to get my lighting figured out because I've still been using natural lighting even though I did buy a big softbox light and that's because I tried to use it and I found that it was casting too much shadow so I need to figure out how to you know better diffuse it or a way to set it up so that it's sort of casting a shadow the way that I want it to cast a shadow or the casting the least amount of shadow. So basically I just got to figure out the angles because my desk is pressed up against a wall so it's hard to get the light behind the desk where I would want it so that my hand casts the least shadow while I'm working. Also I kind of noticed when I did use that big softbox light, the lighting did look very obviously artificial and I wasn't a huge fan of it. So there is that and I will try and sort that out but I don't know how well I will do because I don't have any experience with lighting but um, if anybody has any tips or suggestions, I would appreciate it. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am doing a draw this in your style, and there are a couple of things that I wanted to point out that I did change. First and foremost, you might notice that the character's sweater is a little bit see-through. This was an intentional choice, although with the little bits of fluff on it that I did choose to incorporate from the original image, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of sense. But as I was painting it, I decided I kind of liked it being a little bit transparent. I really do enjoy playing with transparency in my paintings, so I guess that's just a layover from that. And I do enjoy the way that it kind of turned out looking, so even though it doesn't make sense, I guess I still like it. And you might notice as well that I didn't paint over all the stars that I did sketch in, and this is because I found that they weren't quite dispersed enough for my liking. So I figured that I would just not go over all of them and then that would sort of spread them out a little bit more. But I didn't erase the sketch because 
well, two reasons. One, I'm lazy. And the other reason was because I just sort of thought it looked fine. While I was working on the hair for this piece, I am going to bring up I'm a Wonder again because one of her most recent videos sort of inspired me to try and have a little bit more movement in the hair. So these flowy lines are heavily inspired by I'm a Wonder because, and she says the same thing, that she's really not confident with hair. I'm not confident with hair either, but I really like the way that she does it, even if she's not confident in it. I also find that this sort of style really lines up with my art style a lot better. At least I think it fits into the sort of cartoonish almost realistic style that I have, and I know probably a couple of people will scoff at the idea of my artwork being in any way close to realism but I kind of that's sort of what I aim for and this is what I come out with and I don't hate that I know that it does come out cartoony and I don't make a significant effort to change that and I do think that it has a lot to do with my lack of understanding of shadows and light and where to place those things I think that if I got a little bit better at that then maybe my art would come out more realistic but I also I don't hate how it comes out now, I don't hate the cartoonishness of it, even though it isn't exactly what I'm aiming for, but maybe it is to an extent because like I know that's what I'm going to get, so yeah, I don't know. That whole rambling tangent to say that I think the way that this hair came out is one of my favourite parts of the piece. Even though I noticed a lot of bleeding during this process, I mustn't have been letting things dry properly, but uh, I did sort of clean it up towards the end of the piece. That is another reason that I went over this piece with quite a few layers and I tried my best to sort of make everything really defined. I do really like sharp line art, although I do like to keep it coloured in order to... I guess that softens it a bit. So I like it to be soft and sort of cohesive with the painting. At the very least I don't usually like doing a black outline or using a fine liner. It is something that I have done with a couple of pieces, specifically the rib cages and butterflies tattoo design that I did for my friend comes to mind. I'll link it in the cards on the top right hand corner of the screen. So I have done it in the past, but a lot of the time when I'm doing illustrations like these ones, specifically character portraits, I tend to find that black fine liner is a little bit too harsh for what I'm going for and I prefer the look of coloured lines because although I want them to be crisp and clear, I don't want them to be super contrasting, but that tends to take away from the piece rather than add to it. Something else that I wish that I'd included in this painting that I didn't was the way that the original artist drew the arms for the glasses, the, like the bits that keep them on her ears, I think they're called arms. In the original art they were painted as beads 
and I thought that was really cool. And then when I was doing the sketch and working on the piece, I didn't want to reference the original art too heavily because I was concerned that I would end up just sort of copying it. And that's not the aim of the challenge. So I did my best to sort of take in all the elements of the original art before I sat down to do my sketch. But yeah, the original art had beads for the arms of the glasses and I thought those looked really cool, but I forgot about them because I wasn't referencing the original piece as closely as perhaps I should have, maybe a little bit closer, just so that I didn't miss the details that were sort of the reason that I wanted to do this challenge in the first place. Here you will see me trying to show off the metallics in the Kurotake palette. I think that they come up way more beautiful in real life, but it's sort of difficult to show on camera. Just trust me, they're really pretty. So I use the gold to sort of outline the stars and draw the eye to them a little bit more than they were already. And then I use the lighter silvery sort of metallic to do some highlights. And to go over the highlight that I imagined would be bouncing off the skin if tiny little stars were that close to you, although I imagine they're not real stars because obviously if they were you would burn up and die if they came anywhere near you and they wouldn't be this small, they'd be massive and yeah, it's a whole thing. Anyway, it was kind of a last minute decision to add the metallic to her glasses as a reflection and I really liked the look of it and yeah, that was about it. I decided to go over the little hashtag that I'd written on the page in Fineliner because I wanted it to be part of the piece. This is in the sketchbook that I showed you last video and I didn't want it to be like a completely polished finished piece. It kind of turned out to be that way. Seems like that kind of happens to me a lot. But uh, there you have it. Another little piece in my sketchbook where I just wanted to try something a little bit light and easy and yeah, this is how it turned out. So my next video I'm hoping to do a plan with me for the month of October. I do hope that it gets out before next weekend, so I'm going to be pushing myself on this one. But I will be doing my very best to get out a video for Brendan's birthday, who is my co-worker and my friend, and his birthday's in October, so that one will be for him. If you like this video, please remember to press the like button, click subscribe, and click on the little notification bell right next to it as well, so that you get notifications when I upload, if that's something that you're interested in. Thanks so much for watching. Bye pals.